All right, so tonight, hopefully guys, even though it is a bit of moon, is gonna be the night that I can finish off the data on the Rosette Nebula. So far, so far I've got um, about 12 hours on this object with the 183mm um, in SH and O. So hopefully we will be able to get another maybe six hours. Maybe we can get up around the 18 hours, something like that. Um, there's a few clouds around, but it's supposed to clear up tonight. So hopefully, hopefully we should be able to get that third night. If anybody's wondering, this is just a barbecue cover. <laughs> it's a heavy sort of canvassy, rubber backed barbecue cover, which works really well. So I'm just gonna take my little um, desiccant things off here, which take a bit of the moisture when it's set outside like this. Um, and I'm gonna get my 80 millimeter scope. And we're gonna put that on. So I've got my 80 mil scope, again, with the 183mm, my seven nanometer Optolong filters on this scope. Um, yeah, and I've got my little mini PC, my little nook down here. All right, let's get this on. I think it's about there. I think that's our balancing point. Hopefully these clouds do clear. If our forecast is correct. Okay, let's cable up. Let's get our USB 3, got our power, and we've got our focuser um, wheel, filter wheel. So that's all connected. This is all good. Get our caps off. And all right, let's just check balance. Okay. Might be just a little bit too evenly balanced there, so I'm just gonna push that up. Yeah, that's good. So I just wondered how you guys balance your scopes. Do you make them equally sort of balanced or do you just have it sort of slightly scope heavy or slightly counterweight heavy? Looks pretty good now. Just a quick little tip here, guys. Um, if like me, you trip over um, cables quite easily, especially when it's dark. And um, what I've done is I've got some of this white conduit. It just opens up at the end here, just clicks together. Um, and I've got all my like, USB cable and power cable um, between the two rigs. Um, just going through this conduit just makes it a lot easier to see at night so you don't end up breaking your neck like I have a couple of times. So I just got a couple of lengths of that and where I'm gonna be walking between, I know it's there. So it's, yeah, it saved me a lot of time, so. <laughs> All right, so we did manage to get about 18 hours worth of data, guys. So that's not too bad. Um, got about seven, is that, yeah, six to seven hours on each panel, I think. So let's have a look what we came up with. So we've got our oxygen here. 
you always get, you know, you do get, um, these are seven minute exposures, by the way, you do get, you know, quite a lot of signal, of course, with this nebula. So there's the, the O2, then we had our sulfur. Now the sulfur one did become a little bit of an issue, I'll explain later. Um, these are these are actually a bunch of um, two inch second hand Optolong seven nanometer filters and I do get some haloing on these so I'll probably consider doing an upgrade one day on these filters but for now they'll they'll have to do so you can see look with especially with this sulfur I'm getting this sort of haloing um, effect around these bright stars um, and then the hydrogen alpha so you can definitely see the the hydrogen alpha and the O2, you know, the stars in those look fine. And, and of course, of course, the HA layer, you can see how clean, how clean that looks with all that signal. Looks really good, actually, that one. I might have got a little bit more HA data as well, I think, and then the other two. Um, so that's those. So we had a pretty good set to start with. I was pretty happy with how that was looking. Um, this is just combining. So this is combining the three just LRGB combine. Um, of course, it's going to be green like this with the channels um, uh, linked. If we um, unlink the unlinked there, so if we unlink that, that's kind of that's kind of what we're getting at. That looks a little bit more, you know, a bit more hubbly. Of course, you've got a lot of purple in your stars, and so a bit of work to do. Um, Um, and then this was just this is basically just a little bit of dynamic background extraction, the usual thing. I combined all three images. Occasionally I do DBE on um, each channel, but I just combined the images. At this point, everything was looking pretty good um, around the sides, so I was pretty happy with how this was going. Um, I can't actually. I'm trying to remember now what I did at this stage. As you can see, I was pretty, you know, really happy with this sort of detail going through here, these dark sections. That was looking really nice. Um, so let's see how we're going. So at this point, just the usual, um, taking out the background from the stars. So now you can see, um, you can see these little issues I had. Um, so, you know, these little these little sections in here where I'm getting um, these sort of haloing effect even with the um, obviously with the star exterminator it's still going to leave that in because it's seeing that as part of the background so I had to you know I had to sort of work out a way at least if I can minimize that but it's actually nice I, I actually enjoy even though I didn't go in the end for this green and sort of teal I actually enjoy this just as is as well I think that's really nice I really like those colors, that green and that sort of cyan in the center there. So happy with how this was looking, happy with the signal, happy with the clarity here. You can see it's really looking good, getting close in. So the 183 mm doing a good job. Um, so here's more with the, um, this is more with the uh, the green taken out now, so this is kind of getting more to the color scheme that I that I was sort of heading for. Although, as per usual, you know, you finish it and you end up thinking maybe I like the green actually. But anyway, this is what we sort of went for. Um, so t took a took a bunch of that green out. I think from memory, I just used the um, just used a curves stretch on it and just basically took just basically took the um, you know the green the green out of that if we go back to the if we go back to this one here and just have a quick look at this one you can see where it is there and i think i just basically started to sometimes it's hard to remember what you did but i'm pretty sure i just started to pull back these greens to maybe there something like that just so i could start working with it I did make the silly mistake, um, I don't know if you guys do this, but I forgot to, um, didn't realize that I was still working on a, um, an unlinked um, stretch and I was trying to create color masks and working, trying to figure out why my color masks weren't working correctly. <laughs> and of course it's because, you know, the image still had all this, all this green in it. So, um, and then we got our stars. So this is our stars. Um, I took these out in a unstretched, I took the stars out unstretched so I could have a play with them. Um, 
check out James DSO Imager channel. Um, James explains um, on his images how he sometimes goes for a um, takes the stars out on the unstretched image, so just in its linear state using star exterminator, and then you can do like an arc sign stretch on your stars, um, and then you can do a histogram stretch as well. It's just a different way of doing it, um, and it does actually produce nice results because you can get quite a bit of control on your stars um, that way. It's just a difference as opposed to stretching your image or doing a soft stretch, a light stretch on your image, and then pulling your stars out there in a non-linear fashion. You can actually pull them out in this linear state and do a stretch this way. Um, and sometimes you can get a little bit more control that way. So um, yeah, check out check out James's channel anyway. James is um, James has got a really nice approach to um, processing his images, and I often pick up a lot of tips from James's channel. So um, let me know what you think, James, if if this is any good or if I've gone too far. <laughs> I had a go. At, I had a go at your technique here. So anyway, let's move on. Um, so look, you know, all this was here. This is a bunch of masks. Um, you can see down in the corner over here. I got a yellow mask. I got a blue mask, uh, I got a green mask, and I think I got a range mask here just because I wanted to isolate the the um, the area outside of where the nebulosity is and the, and the green mask there. So just playing with masks and curves, you know, going through stretching these um, uh, stretch stretching the image. Um, I think I um, basically then went through. Um, what did I do to this? I did a noise exterminator on it, although I did it quite low. I think I had it at only 50% noise exterminator, so it's still a little bit of grain in there, which I don't mind. Um, and I did a little bit of um, multi-scale linear transform um, to this image just to try and um, just to try and sharpen some of these these um, these dark areas up here, and also you know the edges on some of these areas here. And then it was just a case, really, of the usual. Um, so, putting this together, let's just find the right image. So, sort of putting this together with the stars. You know, I might have undercooked the stars a bit here. I might have not, maybe I've not stretched them quite enough. Um, but you can see the issue. So, the issue I had was um, I did have these sort of haloing effect around these stars from the S2 which was a little bit irritating um, and I was looking for ways to just sort of minimize that so what I ended up doing is I took the starless version into Photoshop um, let's have a look I think we've got it here so I took the I took the starless version of this into Photoshop and on the outside here where it didn't matter too much I just did a little bit of sort of um, using the the healing brush in Photoshop so that worked quite well just for over here sort of in this space area and then sort of in the central area here I just drew a circle around the area I was interested in this was in the starless image and I pulled back on the reds because it was mainly the red causing it and it's not it's not gone completely but it's done a pretty decent job of at least softening it and minimizing it a bit so you know this is what I came up with um, and I was pretty I was pretty happy with this overall. A um, little bit of crunch, a little bit of noise still left in there, but I, I kind of like that. I think that's it's always tricky getting the balance. I'm sure you guys know that. But overall, um, yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with that, and I'm I'm glad with the amount of detail. And I think those I think those sort of 18 hours um, paid off there. Um, I also one thing I did uh, when I took it into Photoshop, I did the usual. I I sort of um, just played with the saturation and vibrance just a little bit and what I did is I actually isolated um, in Photoshop you can actually um, select through the camera raw filter different colors so you I selected blue and then I selected the um, cyan or um, green and it just gave a little bit of difference between the blue and then this sort of green here on the outside so the usual sort of things you can play with in Photoshop so yeah, that's it guys. 
Um, I'll leave you with the final image. If you feel like a subscribe or a like, that is always really appreciated. Hope you got something out of this video and I hope you do like the final image and I hope you're off to a good start in, in um, 2023. So without further ado, I'll leave you for now and um, hopefully I'll see you on the next video. So thanks for hanging out guys and I'll see you next time.